Hello all and uh, welcome to today's webinar on intelligent data governance using Axon EDC and IDQ. Today's speaker is Srinivas Gopal, who is our Informatica veteran from the customer success technology team. And he's been handling these products uh, for over 15 years now. So he is our in-house authority on these products. So before we move on, just wanted to call out a few housekeeping tips. Moving to the first slide. Yeah, <clears throat> so this session is actually for one hour, including question and answer. And all participants have been muted to avoid any interruption. You can submit your questions using the chat option available. You can submit it to the panelists. And also the session is being recorded. So we will be uploading it on our support YouTube channel, as well as sharing the recording, as well as post webinar survey with all the users who have registered for this webinar. So uh, moving on, today's webinar is actually part of, is actually a new success, a new offering that we have rolled out. And it's called the Tech Tuesday webinar series. It's part of the success portal, which was launched uh, mm -hmm. recently. And uh, this portal is essentially a micro learning site to help our customers leverage Informatica products to drive their business outcomes. So this is the URL success.informatica.com and I urge you all to explore it. Uh, so this site will help you bootstrap your product trial experience as well as have a very smooth onboarding experience. We also have uh, specific product learning paths defined, you know, available on the site as well as these expert sessions. So the whole idea is to really help you, enable you to use our products effectively so that you can get the best out of them. We also have a con uh, Informatica concierge, which is essentially, uh, you know, you will see all your success offerings as well as ask an expert session, your CSM information. All that is available right at the top of the website of the site for you. And we have customized the content based on your profile, your products, your search history. Finally, we also have a chatbot option coming out soon on this site. So uh, with that, actually, let's get started with uh, today's webinar. And over to you, Srinivas. Thank you, Neha. Hi, all. Um, moving on to the agenda. Yeah, so uh, we'll go through this uh, quick agenda here, like uh, basically going through the use cases and overview of Axon, the data governance solution, and uh, going through the automated capabilities of data discovery, cataloging uh, using enterprise data catalog, and uh, automate fit for purpose data quality using IDQ, uh, some of the automation capabilities uh, that has been introduced, and uh, uh, some of the AI and ML capabilities, uh, which is the Informatica Clear. Um, we'll go through a brief demo and uh, question answers. So the portfolio of use cases for data governance is pretty big and uh, we see a wide variety of use cases, uh, right from uh, financial services or insurance or retail as we see, uh, wherever data uh, is has to be uh, leveraged for uh, either through the data analytics use cases or the compliance related use cases, uh, some of the examples are like, uh, for example, uh, you're driving a GDPR or CCP or BCBS uh, related use cases, uh, or supply chain management uh, in the retail sector, or uh, the patient data analytics in healthcare sector. Uh, the fundamental key message here is uh, for any of the use cases, data is um, really important to be governed and, uh, and trusted and certified uh, to be used for this intended purpose. So the key challenge uh, we see uh, in the organization is uh, the alignment across uh, uh, business policies and organization ties, uh, uh, all the way to the data delivery uh, on, the, on the operations, right? So uh, this is uh, basically solved through the Informatica uh, Axon, which follows the top-down approach, uh, defining the conceptual model. Uh, helps you defining those uh, business policies and processes and controls. And uh, as we see, Enterprise Data Catalog uses the bottom-up approach uh, where it uh, catalogs, it helps uh, in the technical metadata cataloging. Right. Uh, so the one more important thing for the data governance solution is to be connected 
right? Um, so from the understanding the business need uh, through the business architecture, uh, basically going through the business groups, policies and uh, controls and connections to the uh, system landscape architecture, understanding your uh, uh, ecosystem of the IT side on uh, basically understanding the systems and interfaces and how the information is transported. Uh, to the data architecture, right? basically understanding the how the business and IT work together through the data and their definitions, uh, understanding their quality and standards, right? Uh, very in, uh, insightful for the information uh, to be, uh, uh, insightful for information to be uh, used and, uh, and make the right decisions. Axon uh, Enterprise Data Governance uh, solution uh, basically helps you in centralizing all the inventories uh, in terms of uh, it's organized through facets. And uh, it's many, you'll see like uh, uh, business facets and uh, technical facets uh, working each other to come up with a common definitions on processes and bringing in the stakeholder accountability uh, wherein the organization uh, people are uh, work through the roles and responsibilities and uh, bring in the business rule transparency so that the business is uh, aligned uh, following the business driven approach. Uh, so what is, uh, what is the outcome? Like it, it will help you uh, to give a holistic view of the organization's data, right? And uh, remove silos. Now moving on to the context of uh, data discovery itself, like to, which is the physical data, uh, so enterprise data catalog plays an important role uh, wherein like uh, it, it in the data 3.0 world uh, being metadata uh, is the new operating system uh, leveraging ML and AI uh, for to find the critical data across uh, structured or unstructured sources is very important. Uh, EDC provides that uh, wide variety of scanners to scan the physical metadata and uh, onboard the discovered data automatically uh, with the uh, of course, like the oversight and control, uh, wherein the recommended uh, items are governed and curated. And uh, once the physical data is um, scanned through automatically, uh, the tagging of the data is uh, done uh, through AI and ML, uh, through uh, applying the business context, uh, through the data domain discovery or, uh, or intelligent glossary association uh, to assess the relevance and uh, so that the business can start consuming it. Uh, and uh, correlate each other. The very important uh, relationship between the physical and uh, conceptual model here is through the uh, glossary association, basically uh, giving you a technical name, uh, matching it to the business name. Now, uh, this is a fuzzy match. So uh, this is where the clear uh, intelligent glossary association using AI and ML will help. Uh, basically it uses the sequence alignment algorithms uh, as we see uh, some of the examples here, uh, the the column names are like very uh, uh, physical uh, column names are very um, uh, like shortened and uh, the business names are like uh, more understandable to the business audience, right? So uh, it uses the sequence alignment algorithm, for example, this health program uh, consultation, which is a business term uh, is, is assigned to uh, a technical asset name here, which is found by EDC. Uh, so some of the other uh, aspects that it will help uh, during the glossary association is the uh, synonym dictionary, which, uh, you, which you can provide like in your organization, like what are the common synonyms used, which will help in uh, generating this uh, uh, asset mapping uh, quite efficiently. Uh, and also you can also give the prefix uh, to ignore the options. For example, if you have uh, common prefixes like you uh, name naming convention on the physical uh, metadata, uh, technical metadata is uh, starts with TBL for all the tables or views or uh, common fixes C. Uh, so you can uh, provide all this input so that it provides a better matching. Uh, so the name the name matching uh, was uh, available as a tick preview in 10 to 2, but uh, it's uh, GA in 10.4, the latest version of it. Now there are three driving factors for the intelligent business glossary associations. Uh, so it goes through a scoring mechanism. Uh, the scoring uh, goes with the domain conformance, uh, which is the domain discovery. So uh, we often get questions from the customers, like how do we uh, generate the, our set of the data domain rules. Uh, Informatica provides uh, predefined uh, data domain rules, uh, which uh, 
which can be uh, useful to get started uh, to find, for example, uh, the PIA data like uh, uh, name uh, or address or uh, phone or date of birth, right? So there are a set of domain rules that will help uh, in uh, uh, getting started to find the PI data, right? So, um, and that is the second one is uh, similarity confidence where uh, where it, it will, uh, once we scan the physical metadata, the ADC is going to start uh, preparing the clusters of uh, similar data. Uh, based on the data or even the uh, technical metadata. So the scoring is generated on these two and we saw the uh, name match you know, with an example that uh, even the acronyms or any uh, similar fuzzy matches, uh, the clear is able to uh, generate the score. So uh, if the score grows uh, beyond uh, 80, it is auto accepted. That means uh, it will automate, this is completely automatic. And uh, if the score is uh, around uh, 60 by default, uh, it, it will start recommending and uh, the subject matter experts like data stewards or uh, anybody who is uh, more uh, relevant to the uh, organization as a data asset uh, can go and curate. Now, uh, once the uh, glossary association uh, recommendation is uh, or uh, job is completed like i can at a you can see the data steward can go in and uh, uh, find a business glossary assignment report uh, so uh, at each at each term level you see multiple recommendations so you can go ahead and curate like which is basically the 60 to 80 percent category uh, and also i would like to uh, uh, point out here is that like you can um, always uh, tweak the thresholds uh, with some additional options during the job execution right uh, now, how do we configure uh, with Axon and DDC? Basically, as we discussed, like Axon helps you in defining the conceptual model and DDC provides the physical data model, right? Uh, so the configuration aspect is uh, very straightforward. It uses REST API. Uh, basically, uh, can configure this in the admin panel. Uh, so EDC is basically uses Axon's uh, glossaries to uh, pull in and then uh, execute the IGA. Uh, and then, uh, Axon uh, automatically, uh, once you set up the uh, automatic onboarding, uh, the uh, discovered objects are automatically onboarded. Now, one, one more key uh, question that we get usually is like, can we onboard all the uh, physical data that is found by EDC uh, since it scans through across uh, on-premise legacy or uh, cloud ecosystems? Uh, the best practice is to, uh, onboard the data, physical data to Axon, uh, which is more business um, uh, relevance, which uh, is more business relevance, right? So um, Axon playbook would be a, a very uh, good handy document uh, to get started with the program. So uh, moving on to the context of data quality, uh, a very important one uh, in, the, in terms of the automation and uh, deploy accelerated deployment here through the automatic rule generation uh, from the technical descriptions we'll see in that uh, demos very soon uh, and the metadata as well like because uh, um, a business term can be linked to uh, multiple uh, technical fields and uh, uh, axon helps you to accelerate uh, uh, generate multiple uh, local data quality rules um, based on how how many of uh, associations have been found through IGA, right? Uh, and it enforces that uh, rule across multiple systems or even uh, resources, right? And uh, you can monitor the data quality over a period of time. So uh, seeing the trend and how the uh, how the measures have been uh, going through. Now, uh, now this is where it helps like whether the data that you are trying to leverage is whether it's uh, cleansed and uh, trusted or certified. Now, uh, what are the key activities that are automated like when, especially when there is a, a rule that is to be made at a business term level. Uh, now, it goes through a, a user design or configuration and these are the automated tasks and what business user can achieve. Now, EDC, uh, as we discussed, discovers helps in discovering uh, physical um, metadata uh, on the model, right? And uh, Axon automatically onboards uh, and uh, starts mapping to the conceptual model. And you can define the standard rule definitions. Uh, for example, uh, you, you want the date of birth to be in a valid format or uh, a phone number should be 
uh, mandatory. So those kind of rule definitions uh, can be done here um, on in Axon. And uh, traditionally, you had to map the business rule definition to uh, uh, and to a rule spec in IDQ. And once the rule spec is uh, uh, once the rule spec is implemented in IDQ. Uh, the automated task is basically based on one's uh, uh, one to many relationship. Let's say the phone number or date of birth is found in um, 100 places, right? So uh, it, you, you had to go to uh, 100 uh, different physical data and start applying those rules. Now, uh, what automation has been done from the Axon perspective is like you can, uh, based on the EDC's uh, uh, IGA like that has been executed. We found it in uh, a number of places. Uh, the rules are been uh, will be created automatically uh, from Axon and uh, and uh, basically uh, dynamically based on the frequency being set, whether it's daily or weekly. The uh, DQ assessment mappings uh, will be deployed, and uh, the metrics will be published and uh, published to Axon to. Uh, view to the business user. Based on the uh, monitoring of the data quality metrics, whether it's trending up or down, uh, the exceptions can be uh, remediated using IDQ. Now from Axon 6.3, uh, even this channel has been automated for some of the basic data quality uh, checks, um, uh, wherein um, it uses the nat uh, natural language processing um, to uh, derive uh, from the English definition to the uh, translation to the technical uh, rule. So uh, how does it work? Like basically um, you can uh, give the uh, technical rule reference uh, requirement in a plain text and uh, clear uh, uses NLP and ML uh, to understand and translate the requirement. It starts suggesting you the rule uh, uh, linking into the glossary term. Now uh, once it is uh, accepted, so uh, based on uh, the number of uh, physical fields that have been mapped to, uh, it automatically generates the IDQ rule and deploys it. Now, this is the end-to-end -end process uh, automation that we suggest, so the automation quality uh, from Axon um, to EDC and then the DQ. So uh, basically the process is uh, to gather all the technical metadata from ADC uh, and Axon helps you to define the business term process and policies and critical data elements. And IDQ uh, basically provides the linking of data quality rules and uh, data quality generation suit is basically uh, ex extracts the uh, metrics uh, from the metric store and uh, publishes it to the dashboard in Axon. Now the integration with IDQ is, is through an agent um, so uh, the agent uh, is recommended to be more closer to IDQ, but uh, however, it still works uh, if the agent is deployed uh, on the Axon as well as um, uh, any other server where, where it can uh, ports are communicating to each other. Now we'll go through a, a quick demo. So um, I'm uh, actually John um, is a data steward, so he's um, logging through as John. Uh, here is a, a, uh, basically uh, the screen like where uh, it talks about uh, the search uh, bar, wherein uh, all the facets are organized, uh, which we discussed in the slide, like where, where it navigates through the data. Uh, and then the business and uh, the organizational uh, facets. So which, which you can, um, based on the role uh, that you, the organization, in the organization that you play, you can uh, uh, choose the right facets and, uh, uh, and organize this uh, preferences, right? So uh, you can navigate across uh, multiple facets. And uh, the powerful Unison search capability, uh, basically, uh, let's say I'm uh, having this system searching for uh, CMD. Uh, so the corresponding data sets related to CMD and glossary and data quality rules uh, starts uh, filtering out uh, each other. So uh, that's the power of uh, uh, Unison search uh, where you can navigate all the way uh, back and forth, uh, right from top to bottom, all the way to the policy, right? To the data operation level. Now uh, there's a map view that provides um, the insightful maps uh, basically uh, giving uh, the graphical view of uh, how the 
systems are organized to each other. Here is one more question that we get uh, usually is like, uh, uh, like when, uh, how to start uh, in terms of data governance, like we'll always uh, recommend to start uh, with a small uh, LOB or a department level and then scale it to the enterprise level. Right, um, and in the notifications we see like this is where uh, like to show that uh, the discovered objects uh, that has been found in ADC will start appearing that uh, once you uh, have integrated with ADC, you'll start uh, seeing the discovered objects and uh, attributes being created uh, by role uh, as well and uh, uh, the change request that has been raised uh, for uh, for John, right? Uh, now, uh, Basically, like uh, let's say let's say John want to uh, get into uh, CMD and understand more under the system, and uh, gets into this um, description of what what it means actually, and it it provides a glossary coverage of uh, what CMD system contains, like. Uh, address data or even the industry classification or telephone number. So these are some of the glossary and definitions that we can uh, quickly view on this system. And uh, basically you can see the uh, map view on the interfaces through the CMD. So we see that um, there are multiple systems interacting uh, inbound as well as outbound. So this, uh, this is basically still a, a 10,000 foot level view uh, wherein it gives like a very high level view for uh, any uh, management to take a look at what are the systems interacting to each other. Now, um, this map view, uh, basically I'm trying to uh, zoom it right now so that I can get a full view of it. Now, uh, basically this is the overlay feature which, um, which helps you to uh, go through across data or business or organization. So um, if I want to know like what, what does each system means? Uh, so this description can give like uh, that this is a client master database and uh, MRDC is a reference data store. So um, basically uh, it gives a, a quick overview of like what system um, it may, uh, is uh, stored. And uh, the glossary is basically gives like uh, the glossary level view of uh, what business terms are clearly associated with system. And the stakeholders uh, on the business side, which you'd like to know whom to reach out to, right? So that is basically given uh, through the uh, row across the role as well. Like we see that uh, CMD uh, is owned by uh, Barb and uh, Barb is owner as, uh, as uh, for Orion and other systems as well. And uh, Stewart's, uh, is, Stewart is Emma. So we'll know how to reach out to uh, basically giving the stakeholder accountability. Uh, along with that, uh, you can overlay with uh, associated projects or policies. So uh, you'll see like what are the policies associated with CMD. So you'll see like uh, some of them are related to CCPA. Um, you can have uh, uh, multiple policies associated uh, to the system to know what, what policies are governing that. And uh, also along with the pro projects, um, like basically here, there is a cloud monitoring project um, going through here. Now, uh, Coming back to this, uh, so basically uh, that is a level of view from the graphical uh, insight maps view from the system level. Now, um, going to the impacted policies, like we see like um, this, uh, it, it's primarily impacting, like if any change to the system, we can see the do the impact analysis, like what projects or processes uh, gets impacted. Um, and uh, this is giving the data level view of uh, this is what we uh, give get as a data set and uh, attributes through the discovered object um, through the EDC uh, from the physical metadata. So uh, there is a curation aspect here, like where in uh, the uh, axon status that we see for all these data sets uh, that is uh, being gone, like it's showing the draft status. So we can go ahead and uh, uh, curate the draft once and uh, corresponding attributes as well, right? So uh, for the benefit of this demo, I have already executed the IGA um, and uh, the, we see the already the physical, uh, these are the linked fields um, for these attributes and uh, this is a customer data set, right? So um, some of the examples I would like to take here is like, uh, for example, postal code, right? Um, the postal code uh, here uh, basically provides like, well, from the EDC point of view, uh, where are these uh, physical field names uh, stored, right? Um, it can be uh, anywhere uh, from the cloud or uh, even on-premise or uh, legacy ecosystems here. It is Oracle and uh, file 
as an example. And uh, if important uh, point here is uh, the domain discovery that TDC has executed and uh, started suggesting that, uh, recommending that um, the domain uh, belongs to uh, PII, right? The domain groups so BI belong to, and, and it's an address related data. So this, uh, this is uh, uh, the intelligence that, uh, that can be uh, brought in um, to discover what data is it means, right? So giving the business context. Now, uh, going to the enterprise catalog, this is a, a very important integration aspect here, which is brought through REST API once uh, um, the integration is done. Um, we see that there is a resource, uh, the, there are multiple resources here. So a system uh, to a resource uh, follows a one-to-many relationship. That means uh, it you can see the rolling up of uh, from EDC to Axon scenario here. Um, now uh, it can be uh, various physical uh, systems um, and uh, the physical fields provides a much more granular view. Now, um, you see the, all these are curated uh, glossaries like after post execution of IGA. So let's say uh, uh, I want to view the physical fields associated with a business term called uh, telephone number, right? Um, we see a uh, telephone number is uh, linked to multiple uh, physical uh, fields, uh, wherein like uh, it can be a CSV field or a column uh, or it can be uh, uh, Amazon S3 or anywhere uh, in the physical uh, ecosystem or that has been scanned through ADC. So um, basically, and then uh, going through the history uh, of the changes being made. So this is this provides an audit trail of what, uh, what was changed in this uh, system and when and who changed it, right? So that is uh, very important information from auditing purpose. And uh, from the process perspective, like what are the change requests that has been uh, raised? Like uh, there is, we see one change request has been created basically. Uh, after analysis, John found that, that uh, this, there are written information and there should be a consolidation of uh, data sets. Now moving on to the uh, very important aspect of data quality here. Um, so this provides a dashboard view of um, like various, uh, across various sectors by criticality, the DQ rules. And uh, we see that um, validity, accuracy, and completeness measures, um, and each uh, bucket can have multiple rules that has been executed at a system level, right? Now uh, we see like, as soon as we see in the system, we see like uh, the, the uh, accuracy uh, needs to be improved uh, on some of the rules that has been uh, set. So, so immediately you can get to know that uh, this, can be leveraged to the uh, analytics or uh, policy driven use cases that you are executing, right? Now, uh, moving on to the data quality uh, rules build approach, right? Um, with the data quality sector here. So uh, I'm moving on to this phase it like to show like uh, three approaches of uh, data quality uh, that, that can be integrated, right? With IDQ. Uh, the very first basic one is, um, basically the, the city name check here. So uh, this uh, particular uh, city name check is a rule that has been uh, integrated with a, a profile and uh, at, at a particular profile with a rule. Now uh, this profile uh, is, is particular to a, uh, one, one physical uh, data set, right? Or a table or a, or a, or a uh, column. Now, uh, this is helpful when you uh, are having like hundreds of profiles that are already created in IDQ and uh, you're just uh, starting integrating with Axon and uh, the rule execution, you just want to uh, integrate with the uh, Axon and uh, publish the metrics, right? So now the challenge with this approach is like, um, as we saw in EDC uh, IGA scenario where uh, we, they, we were able to find like for uh, for a city, you can uh, be in multiple places uh, or one, one business term can link to multiple fields, wherein uh, that approach uh, will give you uh, basically uh, a wider um, deployment and automatic rule generation, right? So uh, the report provide gives, uh, gives you the trend analysis. Uh, basically you can monitor a period of time and see if this is actually um, trending down. So you can take actions on that to the change request or reach uh, 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 to the corresponding uh, stakeholders, right? Now uh, for the standard rule uh, generation through the business term, 
so i have some uh, examples here uh, where i can show like uh, how that how this works right uh, so let's take telephone number uh, which i already created and uh, you see there are uh, four uh, auto generated rules that uh, axon was automatically able to create uh, basically um, through the help of uh, adc uh, technical metadata being found at multiple places and linked to the same business term now uh, this is this accelerated deployment is really helpful wherein um, you want to uh, dynamically uh, generate the rules and uh, publish the metrics and get the score out of it so um, so a lot of uh, productivity improvements here so uh, important point here is uh, you need to uh, make sure that the rule uh, automatic generation is uh, set to yes and uh, and the linked attributes have been accepted and curated right uh, so this basically gives the report will be of uh, for each field level like what is the scores like you see uh, like it's uh, this is a data set stored in uh, cmd and the other ones are mrds and cmd as well at various places and you can see that there's a different level of score generated that means uh, uh, you can know which one can be more trusted right now there's a this is a third approach wherein um, where i can uh, see a postal code i am taking an example here to generate a standard rule so um, basically i can check the postal code validity forming to standards with uh, of uh, let's say five digits right uh, just as an example and uh, setting it to the validity score here um, so i can type in the uh, rule here uh, with the technical description as postal code is five digits right and just taking an example so as soon as you do that in the enter in the technical rule reference um, the the clear uh, gets enabled here so and you can start saying the uh, recommendation part with the technical rule so um, in that way you can um, automatically generate the rule in idq and it gets deployed you can always modify this rule um, shouldn't shouldn't be empty and refresh it so you can uh, see the generated uh, rule and uh, verify and then suggest it to deploy right now this automatically um, so this once you check this box like basically if you have multiple um, postal codes at, at various places so it uh, the rules get automatically generated and uh, and and once you say and select this uh, uh, generating our rule automatically at low at local uh, rule level uh, at a physical field level so you can uh, check this box and uh, the other uh, key aspects are like to set like what is the criticality of the rule right and uh, the frequency that it has to execute uh, the green and amber tag uh, targets uh, for uh, the metrics uh, to be tracked at uh, at a confidence level right now let me save this okay so uh, so now basically uh, the the rule got uh, generated here uh, we can also see in the data quality base it that the rule got generated So we see the there is an auto rule created automatically uh, in the in the CMD as well. So it it go, it's going to schedule uh, execute at a scheduled frequency automatically in IDQ and uh, provide the uh, metrics back uh, to the axon uh, and then uh, comes back with the result and uh, you can uh, set the frequency based on how the monitoring goes through as a uh, from the business perspective. Now, uh, coming to other facets, like uh, since uh, the, it, going to the organization level, there are other facets like people and roles. Uh, so Axon provides the role-based security, right? So uh, whether it's uh, being a, what level of uh, organization you belong to. So um, whether it's a steward or a, or a system business owner, so the, it provides a role-based security. Um, and uh, the people you can integrate with any uh, identity provider like uh, Active Directory or anything like that. Uh, please refer to PAM for the supported versions, right? 
Now, uh, coming uh, to the business outcome uh, of uh, doing achieving this right for uh, use cases, right? Now, uh, the key uh, the transition that we see is uh, from uh, from the business uh, perspective is like uh, all the blocks of the organization, like uh, data management policies to a framework to this critical data element process. So building this data management capability through the Axon data governance and uh, data catalog and data quality and data management capabilities, um, it starts um, working, uh, collaborating with each other and work as a uh, cohesive unit, right? So uh, that very important uh, aspect of this uh, building the data management strategy and uh, Informatica being the data management uh, leader uh, helps you to get there. Uh, with that, uh, I'd uh, like to end this uh, demo and uh, open for Q&A. Uh, Neha? Yeah. <clears throat> Thank you, Srinivas. Uh, so if there are any questions, uh, please uh, post your questions in the Q&A panel. Uh, we, will, uh, we will take it up uh, through the to the panelists in the entire. So we have quite a few questions coming in, uh, Srinivas. Uh, so sure. I think uh, most of the most of the questions were answered uh, directly on the chat, but uh, there are a few which are still, uh, you know, uh, we are waiting for you to wrap up. I believe uh, there's one question which is uh, how to create policy and manager, uh, and what does it mean? Oh uh, yeah, uh, sure, Pratavi. Thank you. Uh, so uh, there are uh, multiple ways. Like uh, one is uh, through the Axon bulk upload uh, process, which uh, basically you can upload through spreadsheets, or you can use REST API through a programmatic access as well. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, we have another question which is coming in uh, about custom integration. Uh, you know. Uh, meaning metadata ingestion from systems which are not available out of the box. Uh, so they're asking, uh, what about these custom integrations? How do we Yeah, EDC that? provides uh, a custom uh, 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 metadata scanner approach, so you can uh, still build the a custom uh, model and uh, custom scanner as well. So yeah, you can still do that through EDC, yeah. Thank you. Uh, right, a lot of questions. So what pieces of the tool can be integrated with Tableau Desktop? With Tableau Desktop, there are uh, multiple uh, features. One is uh, uh, the scanning part of it, like basically understanding what the Tableau um, uh, uh, reports are built actually, right? So that is a scanning activity. Uh, the other use case is like a uh, data provisioning use case wherein uh, you uh, you were navigating through uh, data through EDC and uh, you found that the data, the full data you need or a particular data you need to analyze more and you can provision the data uh, to Tableau to analyze more. So uh, there are multiple use cases with Tableau there. Um, so you can uh, leverage based on what is the uh, need uh, in terms of uh, reporting. Perfect, thank you. I think there are still a lot of questions asking, you know, if this webinar is being recorded. Yes, uh, this session is being recorded and uh, all the res registered participants will receive an email along with the slide deck that was presented and a copy of the recording. So that will have a link uh, to our YouTube channel. So you will you will uh, receive, uh, receive this recording. Uh, so there is another question which is coming up. Uh, so I think it's mostly a license question. Uh, I don't know if we should, uh, we will have that. So they're asking, is this is the is the license a single license for both Axon and EDC, or is it two separate licenses? Uh, it's two separate licenses. Uh, you can uh, reach out to the account uh, manager um, from the Informatica side. So like uh, it's two separate licenses. Uh, uh, there is another question from Robin. Uh, when we talk about scanning, do we have to install an agent on all the servers? So how does that yeah, work? Yeah, that's a good question. So uh, yeah, basically, uh, it, it works both ways. Like some of the source systems uh, do support uh, remote scanning uh, capabilities. Uh, however, like uh, you can uh, directly uh, set up the scan uh, from EDC to the physical systems. And, uh, and and set up the resource basically and uh, schedule it regularly interval. So uh, 
some of the sources like remote scanning uh, ability, um, capabilities are already there. Uh, I would refer to PAM uh, again, which is a uh, product availability matrix uh, with the version that you have uh, uh, like installed uh, to get uh, uh, which the remote scanner is supported for which source systems. So. Thank you, Srinivas. Uh, there's another question from Wes. Uh, so I believe he was referring to one of the screens that you showed during the EDC demo, uh, which show, which showed the recommendations to the stewards. Is the, uh, the question is, is that a new feature, and how can we enable that, uh, get it in our interface? Yeah, very important feature the, uh, to provide uh, get into accelerated uh, deployment and assigning business context um, for stewards. So um, it, this was introduced in uh, 10 to 2 hotfix one. Uh, I think it's uh, like uh, you can just uh, uh, upgrade uh, as well. Like if you are in a lower version um, and 10.4, and, uh, uh, of course, it's available. I think there is another question. Yes, uh, Srinivas. Uh, uh, there is another question uh, from Anjana asking if the data dictionary can that be integrated with Tableau? Data dictionary integration with Tableau. Um, I'd like to more understand more on that use case uh, since um, yeah. since Axon itself uh, provides a <coughs> um, glossary upload as well as dashboard view. In, in Axon itself. Um, maybe we'll uh, connect offline on this to understand more on this use case. But, uh, so. Sounds good. Sounds good. Uh, there is a question from Ellen. Uh, question regarding auto creating rules in the Axon. Is it possible to auto create uh, more complex rules? Uh, something like integrity check, consistency check between source and target? Yeah, the NLP is uh, is follows a standard set of rules. Uh, like uh, right now, it's uh, at a uh, like you can do a length check or uh, or uh, very uh, like range checks kind of uh, scenarios. Now, um, coming to the complex ones, you can still build a IDQ rule spec and still integrate with Axon and um, using the standard data quality rule approach. Um, and EDC is going to help uh, to find where exactly, uh, where else you can find uh, the similar data and then uh, basically generate the uh, mappings and uh, publish the metrics. Um, so for the complex rules, uh, you can still build it in IDQ and then uh, link it to Axon to uh, get the metrics uh, generated. Right? So. I think there is a question regarding the, what are the supported databases? I believe uh, you, know, you referred uh, to the product availability matrix. Yes. Between us. yes. Uh, yeah, so right. we will certainly, as a part of the email that will be sent out to all the registered participants, we will have a link to the resource kit as well, which will have uh, links to some of the important uh, resources along with uh, PAM so that to have complete details on the complete supportability matrix for the product, including source and targets uh, uh, in that. So yeah. I think that should be a good uh, reference point. Yeah, yeah definitely. Yeah. Uh, so there is uh, uh, there's another question uh, coming up. Is, is there any integration with ER Studio Team Server Manager. Uh, that we have to check with Pam on as well. Um, uh, I think okay. Erwin uh, is supported, uh, but to the specific version uh, that we have to check in uh, Pam uh, for EDC. Yes. Got it. Okay. So I think any any support uh, related uh, uh, questions, right? any supportability related questions rather, I think uh, you guys uh, will have to refer to the. BAM document, so that has complete details. Exactly, yeah. yeah. Uh, a question from Ravi Khan. Uh, can we integrate the Informatica Power Center mappings into Axon to find the lineage? Yeah, so uh, again, uh, the the power center uh, basically, um, at it, it's at a physical level, at a data delivery level, right? So it helps you to the move the data from A point A to B. So EDC is the uh, primary, so uh, like provides the 
uh, power center scanning and derives the lineage and helps in axon. Uh, so we saw that like uh, the automatically axon will be able to discover the data objects right from ADC. Uh, so that integration at as a system level. So um, so eventually indirectly it's going to help axon in terms of uh, getting the system interfaces uh, and at a system level lineage right uh, and a data set level the lineage um, uh, or attribute level. So um, uh, a key thing to note here is EDC provides you the granular data level lineage uh, through the power center scanning or uh, any DI a tool that is supported. Now uh, axon is more at a conceptual level and at, uh, at a data set and attribute level lineages. Uh, it's a rolled up version on the axon side. Uh, Srinivas, I think we probably have uh, time for a couple of uh, more uh, questions. Uh, I know sure. there are a lot of yeah. questions coming coming in. Uh, so yeah. for those uh, for those questions which are not uh, going to be answered or where we don't have time to answer, we will certainly be consolidating all those requests and we'll be uh, reaching out at a later point of time. So we probably have uh, time for two more questions. Uh, Srinivas, I think one of the questions uh, okay. that's coming in uh, from Ram Prashant, can we have a customized dashboard view in Axon for each business user based on the domain, like product, customer, et cetera? Um, that's a interesting question because there is a new uh, 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 solution that has been released through Axon 6.3 called the Data Marketplace Solution. Um, which uh, which provides you the categorical, categorical and domain level or a, a unit level view. Uh, maybe you can take a look on that um, and customizations, uh, maybe you can uh, take it offline like if uh, uh, it can be worked through the REST APIs, right? So um, yeah, definitely I would uh, recommend to see the data marketplace uh, solution as well. So we can, uh, we can connect on this offline. Uh, so. Got it. Yeah, uh, Sh uh, Shrikant, I know there is a question from you uh, about understanding uh, uh, how this product helps with ML and data science initiatives. Um, I, I don't think it's going to be a straight answer, uh, you know, a straightforward answer rather uh, to be given. So I think it will require to understand your use cases and what you intend to do and how our product can be applied for those. So I think we will require a follow up on this. So we will we will do that. So we can uh, we can we can connect with you on that. Uh, yeah. One last yeah, question. Yeah, yeah, so good, good, you know, yes, you want to add something. Yeah, I just wanted to pitch in on a few things, right? Either it's uh, data science use cases or, uh, or data analytics, or uh, there'll be more various use cases. The, the fundamental point uh, I was trying to make on the portfolio of use cases is um, the whether you're pulling it from a data store or, or a cloud ecosystem, data needs to be governed, right? Um, the, it, it needs to be checked through the data quality and make sure it's trusted. And, and governed and to certified so that you can uh, in, uh, start using it to uh, data science or any any use cases where, uh, where you can make the right uh, decisions, right? Uh, it shows the proper results as well. So yeah, uh, th that's all. Yeah. Okay, um, there, are, there are a few questions uh, like how do we connect with us offline? Uh, or you know, how do we sort of uh, have any, if there are any additional questions, how can customers reach out to us? So there are multiple uh, channels through which you can uh, connect with us. Uh, obviously the most uh, preferred channel is through our communities, uh, the Informatica network uh, where you can post your questions and we have our subject matter experts who who moderate the forums and respond back. So, and that will also help other customers uh, Sort of, uh, you know, understand the uh, understand the scenarios, and they can pitch in as well. The second option is uh, through Ask an Expert uh, channel. So, if you are a registered project contact, uh, read write contact on the project, 
you uh, are you know and if you are a premium and a signature success customer you are entitled for two ask an expert sessions per month and uh, uh, edc axon data quality all these products are part of the ask an expert session so you can always uh, go ahead and uh, you know request for uh, request for a session and you, we will have uh, uh, we will have a dedicated uh, 45 minute uh, session uh, with with your very specific use cases uh, answered by our uh, support specialists uh, the third option is uh, if you want to understand more learn more about the product uh, the different features functionalities uh, at different levels starting from a beginner level to an advanced uh, uh, intermediate and advanced. Uh, I believe Neha, in the beginning of the slide, she spoke about uh, the success portal. Uh, we we have put together learning paths uh, for products like Axon, EDC, Big Data, MDM uh, at at different levels and different stages. So please go through the uh, go through the learning path. It's free. Uh, it's free learning that's available for you. Uh, so this will help you sort of get started and uh, you know, understand the product features and capabilities starting from the most basic functionalities to the advanced like best practices architecture and performance uh, uh, you know uh, uh, troubleshooting so that that should be a good uh, uh, starting point point for you guys and any anything beyond that we always have uh, ask an expert sessions or additional trainings that are available so that hopefully that information uh, is useful to you guys so with that I think uh, uh, we have uh, come to the end of this uh, webinar. Uh, uh, Srinivas, thank you so much for your time and uh, I thank everyone uh, who attended this uh, uh, for the great response. We had a, a, you know, a fantastic uh, turnout uh, for this first uh, Tech Tuesday webinar for the year. So it's, it's been a, it's a, it's off to a great start. Uh, so thank, thanks everyone and we look forward to connecting with you uh, you know, in the following uh, weeks as well. I believe, uh, Srinivas, uh, we all we will also be planning like a uh, you know part two of this uh, at a later point of time. So please keep in uh, sure. yeah. uh, you know uh, yeah uh, watch the Tech Tuesday webinar uh, space. Uh, so you can you can look at the schedule on uh, success.informatica.com. So if you go if you log into success.informatica.com, you have a Tech Tuesday webinar space where uh, where we will be. Uh, posting all the upcoming uh, uh, webinar topics and you will also be able to view all the recordings of the previous uh, topics and uh, if you want to schedule a time with our subject matter experts through the ask an expert sessions uh, please go to go to log into the e-support portal that is the uh, that is the system where you go and lock cases with support right so you will have an option to open an ask an expert case and through that, you can uh, select a time slot that is available, and uh, and and book the uh, you know uh, book the, book the session with our subject matter experts. Uh, thanks, everyone, and have a good rest of the day. Bye. Thank you.